We're going to be looking at building an artwork with a subtle narrative based around a portrait illustration, where the whole process starts with a drawing. So, step one, the drawing. In much of my portrait illustration work, I build loose but purposeful narratives running through the images. This image is based around a very good musician, and as you can see, I've placed imagery within the artwork that relates to that musicianship. So gelled lights, that you might find on a stage setting, words and text that relate to music. This musician had a dog he was very fond of, so I've put that in the imagery. There are also symbols relating to music, like musical notes, uh, treble clefs and bass clefs buried in the imagery as well. I also use a lot of textures like paint splats, marks, and different things I can find to build into the imagery to give it energy and depth and interest. As you can see in this illustration of this lady, of course, these images have been assembled digitally using Photoshop, but we're going to look at making a similar styled image using pens, paint and collage. And it all starts with a drawing. I've chosen to do a self-portrait. So I'm going to start with the features of the face. I'm just going to mark out the dominant features. I have an A4 piece of paper and I'm using a fountain pen to mark out the lines of my face. And then with a biro pen, I'm going to use a cross hatching technique to put some texture and shade into the face. I very much look for dominant lines that make up the features of the face. I also like to be very loose and work quite quickly. This puts a lot of energy into the illustration, I find. Then going over certain aspects of the image with a fountain pen, which is an ink that better reacts to water. And then I'm using a smudge pen, a water pen, that you fill with water just to smudge parts of the ink in. And also using a brush and ink, watered down ink on a palette using a brush and just putting detail and texture into that image and building it up bit by bit and making decisions as I go. I'm looking for something with energy, something that has strong lines and I also put a lot of uh, detail in that, that wouldn't be there in, in the image that I'm referencing. So if, if I'm working off a photo, I tend to put incidents like graphic incidents that aren't there initially. So little boxes with lines going through them, little squiggles and all sorts of other things. Building up the layers, building up the textures. So hopefully I'll end up with something quite energetic and a strong image to take to the next stage. And finally, just to finish off this first step, if you take your illustration, your portrait, and very carefully with a pair of scissors, just cut round it leaving about a centimetre between the edge of your illustration so it leaves a border all the way round. And one of the reasons I do this, it just makes the graphic pop out slightly, which will be interesting moving forward. Now this illustration is ready, and we're ready to move on to the next stage, step two, which is preparing our background. You can make your portrait however you want. Look for dominant lines in the face, Experiment with textures, maybe use some cross hatching, or even maybe some watered down inks as I have in mine. It's absolutely up to you. Experiment and have fun. 